Okay. Um, okay. Michael, I'm going to look in your nose now. As long as you don't try to get there rectally, we're good. Yeah. So now I'm putting a gel in your nose. Okay. And it's called... Uh, mm -hmm. It's a type of local anesthetic. It's called clinical mm -hmm. gel. So I'm putting it in your area of your sinuses where you're going to be working. High up here to get the... Forehead sinus area, and then uh, uh, here to get your back sinus, and then along your structure here called your neck over there. And then, I don't know if you remember, but I also told you we'd shrink down uh, some of the mucous membrane mm -hmm. structure called the turbinate. Yep. So I'm putting it along that now. I put, I put some alongside your septum, which is in the center. I'm not doing anything with that. Just, right. just kind of numbs it up a little bit. Now, we're going to do the same thing on the uh, right side. I'm going to go up here. And uh, alongside. Same thing here on the turbinate structure. Okay. What, what is it? Um, do you have any a sensation of this gel going on? Yeah, just. Uh, what does that feel like? Uh, basically, like there's some gel in there that I probably need to sneeze or blow my nose or something. But. Yeah. So, so here's the thing: is this. The gel, um, it takes a couple of minutes to work, four to five minutes, but um, it kind of helps prevent that sensation too. It's not okay. Yeah, I'm sure once it numbs up, then that, that sensation goes away. Mm -hmm. So, just a little over here. Now, just check this side here. Okay. So then... Um, <coughs> Mike, I'm going to put a little uh, kind of a cotton in your nose, okay? Mm -hmm. So the purpose of this cotton is more just to, you know, catch any fluids. Okay. Now we'll repeat it on the right side. Okay. Your septum is a little, a little slightly crooked to this side. It's got a little, uh, what they call spur on it, mm -hmm. but it's not, it's not an issue. I promise I didn't beat him since the last time. Mm -hmm. There you go. So this is a little, uh, so I put that cotton in here now too. Okay. And then tweak it a little bit right here. Mm -hmm. What's that now? Oh, nothing. Section So, Mike, the gel has had en enough time to work now. So I'm going to clean it out. Okay.
So now the gel is out, uh, and, I'm, and so I have to put a little local anesthetic there now, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, so... So don't sneeze now. Uh, here you go. Can you feel that? Uh, no. Okay, so now I put a little of this stuff in here. So this is just at these kind of strategic points here, just to... Yeah, I felt that. Did you? Yeah, it's like a burn sensation. Oh yeah, so that's when the, uh, when the solution kind of goes into your membrane stuff. He's such a nerd. <laughs> you get, your arms get tired. Wait, and then it starts brought the full setup with the tripod. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> Mic, everybody. <laughs> What did you do in the? I actually need a little bit more. Okay. What did you do in the submar when you were a submariner? Uh, I operated the nuclear reactor and also was oh. in charge of repair and troubleshooting uh, oh, and wow. preventative maintenance on all the reactors' protective electronics. Wow. Hmm. I used to tell people he was Homer Simpson on a submarine. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, actually, Matt Groening was a submarine nuclear person. That's how he got. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> what? What? Um, how long were you in the Navy? Uh, six years total. Mm -hmm. That's the minimum term for a nuclear trained person. Oh yeah, I would imagine they want to keep <laughs> have to invest all that time. Oh in yeah, money and energy. It's a two-year program uh, going through the nuclear training program, and yeah. then uh, they equate it to getting uh, like a four or six-year nuclear engineering degree in two years. Is that right? Yeah, and it's, um, they say they have an 80% attrition rate. They do? Yeah. Where, uh, where is this held? Uh, when I went through, it was in Orlando, and then uh, the follow-up to it was up in um, Charleston, South Carolina, but they've shut the Orlando base down, and now all of it is in Charleston. I don't know if you heard that. Yeah, I did. So I'm moving your turbinate, Okay. and uh, that's perfectly normal, because yep. it's gonna help you but also it uh, gets us to where we need to be. Cool. Hmm, interesting. interesting. I mean, you, you, uh, section please, where you, is that, does some of the, uh, some of the people who go through that program and then when they separate from the Navy, do they go into civilian nuclear? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's, that's the vast majority. Uh, pretty much any nuclear uh, facility around the country has a pretty high rate of uh, former nuclear, or former Navy nuclear. Oh, yeah, I think, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. A couple years ago, he took, a, what was it, Coursera for nuclear engineering. Oh, yeah. And he skipped the whole course and took the hmm. test and got a 98. Was that right? Wow. And he hadn't yeah, it's been, been over ten years yeah. since, been since he was on the boat. Active involved with it. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. But you is so. Uh, but you you didn't do any of that when you were you know when you, once you got out. No, no. I uh, I've been wanting. I wanted to work in the computer side of things for uh, a long time, and oh, even okay. told the recruiter that. And oh. he says, "Well, we don't have anything computer related, but this nuclear ET you work with computers all the time." Oh, wow. Yeah. And you being from Eastern Kentucky, I had no idea he wasn't quite truthful with me at that point. <laughs> to say the least. Uh, but I found out after the fact that he got credit for two recruits for every nuclear person he brought in. Yeah, that would assist in his recruiting. I would yes. Yes. Oh, wow. <clears throat> 
Mm. So yeah, going through the schooling, um, on average, we were taking 60 to 80 pages of notes per day. Whoa. <laughs> it's a pretty intense training program. Yep. And yeah, so 80% of the people that come into it that tested high enough to even be in it in the first place, uh, wash it out because wow. of that type of stuff. But the Navy gets benefit out of that too because those people still have their six year obligation that oh, they yeah. signed up for and they're very intelligent for other parts of the Navy. So, so they generally mm -hmm. they generally push them off to uh, other electronics or navigation or something like that. And oh, sure. they tend to perform real well there. Oh yeah. Can see it great the Navy. I I mean, so, um, like, what when you were when you were on the on the submarine? Which uh, kind of locations did you? Where were your? I mean, I know, not your home base, but where were the like furthest bases that you went? To? Uh, so or location. Yeah, the the submarine service and Navy in general operates on. Um, they do six months deployments, okay. but then they also do several, a uh, couple of week, maybe a month or so, uh, little exercises just to keep the boat operational and. Uh, we oh yeah, yeah. Have local stuff, but so while I was on board, we set the boat's record for the longest time underway without contact. And that was seventy-four days, and then wow. uh, that was contact with anybody. So yeah. like, I mean, were you in? On the, were, were you in the Pacific, Atlantic, or um, the, the, the Atlantic? Yeah, I was oh. on the Atlantic okay. side. So we hit uh, mm -hmm. uh, Arctic Circle, the yeah, equator. Yeah, we were on the Arctic Circle. And Did you really? Up, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were up there for a while. That was actually the 74 days without contact. Uh, we were watching foreign navies do exercises without their knowledge that we were there. <laughs> and um, saw some of the most elusive submarines in the world while we were there. Oh. Uh, because they were they were kind of rolling them all out in fashion to, to test them and show them. Oh, I see. And then... Uh, Got down to uh, Bergen, Norway, Tromso, Norway. Three uh, percent. Hmm. And then down towards. Uh, Way up in the North Atlantic. Yeah, North Atlantic, yeah. And then down into uh, Fastlane, Scotland. Um, hmm. We also did a med run, and yeah, they we were well. right off the coast of Kosovo. Yeah. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah, we were actually in basket to fire on Kosovo um, oh, during that whole ordeal and oh my goodness. Uh, luckily there was some extension that was signed and we came out of what they call coming out of the basket mm -hmm. and another submarine went in and took our place and uh, he backed out of the deal or it expired or whatever and the sub that replaced us actually fired on Kosovo oh wow so I'm actually glad that we didn't fire because you never know how that's gonna <coughs> how you're gonna handle that type of stuff Right. Went to Turkey, Greece, Italy. Did, so when you when you went to those places, uh -huh. did you um, disembark? Yeah, yeah. Each of the port calls, uh, they try to get at least a few days where the guys can. Oh, nice. uh, rotate through and get out in town, and mm -hmm. yeah, it, uh, so yeah, Turkey. We went. We pulled into um, Aksaz, Turkey, was the name of the town, mm. and um, mm -hmm. it was very nice. They it was off season, so I actually went into town and rented a room at a five star resort for next to nothing because it was off season. Oh wow! So that was that was pretty good. Yeah, and. Um, they had this uh, basically a street market where you could go in and buy just about anything, and most of it, all of it, I'm sure, actually was oh, knockoff. Oh yeah. So I didn't realize it was going to be as cold as it was and rainy. So I walked into a shop and they had a big Nike jacket, mm -hmm. and uh, they were okay. they were asking uh, like eighty dollars for it. Yeah. And so I told him I'd offer him 15. And oh, really? Like, yeah, he's like, oh, no, no, no. So I started walking out of the shop. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Is that right? Yeah. So I ended up getting it for $18 instead of 15. 
Well, that's uh, that's quite a reduction. Yes, and that's that's the way they they Operate. handle things. Yeah, if you don't barter with them, it's an insult. Oh wow! Hey, that's a to be knowledgeable of their culture. Yeah, yeah, and any time we pulled into a foreign port, we had um, a liaison person that would come on board and tell us the do's and don'ts section. of the local customs. Oh, did you? Did you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Did you guys So what, what rank did they give you uh, when you, after you completed that whole program? Uh, so right out of the program, it's um, basically you're an E4, so oh, okay. you're, you're four layers up through the hierarchy already. Yeah. And then uh, nuclear people generally get promoted very quickly through E5, E6. Oh. Uh, I, I was uh, a bit of a out of the norm. Mm -hmm. I, um, when you're going through the training, they emphasize that they want people who are alert and cognizant and making sure that uh, something bad isn't going to happen just because you were given an order from somebody. Right. And uh, I carried that on to the boat, and they didn't particularly care for that side of the things. So, oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah. So um, I was promoted to E5 and then uh, dropped back down to E3. Is that right? Yep. And then made E4 again, then made E5 again, and then dropped back to E4. He was a problem child. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, was, yeah. Uh, you get the, um, So we've all, and this ties everything at this point. Uh, okay. Michael. So we're going to start uh, doing the balloon work in a minute here. Okay. Yeah, I can feel the numbing done into my teeth and. Yeah.